Apple initially introduced its self-repair program in April of 2022, providing another option for repair on its latest iPhone models. I covered this shortly after it came out, doing a screen and camera replacement to an iPhone 13 Pro. We discovered there was more to the self-repair program than it first seemed. The initial version of the program had many benefits, but also a few shortcomings. Apple said at the time there'd be more parts and tools to come, and they kept their word by introducing parts and tools for their MacBook laptops. Let's see what's on offer and if the revised program could be of any real use. Similar to last time, these genuine parts can be found on Apple's self-service repair site. Along with the existing iPhone SE, 12 and 13 models, Apple has now added the 2020 and 2021 MacBook Air and Pro models with M1 processors. Nothing is yet available for the older Intel MacBooks or the new M2 MacBook Pro. You won't find any parts or manuals for desktops such as the iMac, Mac Mini or Mac Studio. However, Apple mentions more models are to come as well as the program will soon be expanding to Europe. Like when I previously ordered replacement iPhone parts from this site, you're required to provide a serial number. This time, you'll need one just to even see what's on offer. A quick search on eBay and I was able to grab some serial numbers allowing me to continue. While providing a serial number can help ensure a customer doesn't order the incorrect part, it also allows Apple to track the repair and assign the replacement part to that specific device. Once I've gained access to the parts page, we can see the list of available repairs, which of course differs for each model. For the M1 MacBook Pro, you get everything from the audio and Touch ID boards to the top case and display. Just like the iPhone repair, Apple also offers a seven day rental on tools for 50 US dollars, if you don't already own the necessary tools to complete the repair. Of course, this is only great if the pricing for parts is reasonable, and a portion of it is. All sets of screws and brackets are $5 each, a replacement headphone jack, $12, a fan for $15, speakers for $29, or a USB-C board for just $12. That's not just reasonable, but in most cases is cheaper than what you'll find on eBay and third-party websites. Your more expensive parts include things like trackpads, displays, logic boards, and Touch ID sensors, which also require running system configuration after repair to pair the component to the device. System configuration is Apple's secret key to having a fully functional device after repair, and one no third party can access. That's because Apple are the only ones that can run this program. After completing a repair on the iPhone 13 Pro, I was required to message a support representative to have them remote connect to the phone and run the calibration which took an hour and 27 minutes to complete, as we kept running into issues. Without this calibration, the phone's software is programmed to display warning messages and even remove functions from the phone, such as auto brightness and true tone. So despite this program, Apple still uses software to deter or limit third-party repair. Remember, this self-repair program, in a sense, is still first-party repair. Or maybe I could class it as second-party repair, a hybrid between first and third party repair. You're using all the parts, manuals and software the first party would, but you're doing it yourself. That means Apple has control on the parts they sell you and for what price. Using the serial number you supplied when ordering, they can ensure the parts are only used on that device, making this program not practical for third party repair shops who might want to order parts in advance. Don't get me wrong, it's great to have the ability to buy parts and tools from Apple, especially when some of them are really well priced, but don't confuse this with right to repair. Currently, the only option for a battery replacement on a MacBook Pro is one that involves replacing the whole top case, which houses the keyboard, touch bar, microphone, speakers, and battery. Making something that years ago you could remove by flicking a switch on the base or unscrewing a few screws into a 108 page process that will set you back 527 US dollars with a slight discount if you return your old part. If you think that's crazy, Apple would only charge you $200 for a battery replacement. So why would anyone spend over $500 plus labor to replace it themselves if it's more than twice the price of having Apple do it? 
Apple could possibly be replacing the battery without replacing the whole top case, hence the cheaper price. But they don't offer the battery alone. Maybe because removing it isn't easy, thanks to it being glued into place. Despite this, they do sell a replacement battery for the M1 MacBook Air, which will set you back $119 before the return credit. A whole $10 less than Apple's $129 repair option. So your labor is worth about $10. $10 to unscrew everything, pry out the glued in battery, stick it all back together, and hope it works. So there isn't much financial incentive to do the repair yourself through this program if you're replacing anything substantial, like a display or battery. But for other smaller, less commonly replaced parts, they're significantly cheaper. Being able to buy a replacement USB-C port for just $12 is fantastic. Not only is that a fair price, but you know you're getting a real and genuine part. I couldn't find pricing for a display replacement outside Apple's extended warranty price to be able to compare against the self-service option, but I'm sure it's also very costly. But in the end, a repair program can only be as good as the repairability of the device itself. Apple chose to rivet in the keyboard, so instead of a $30 replacement part, it's $527 to replace the entire top case. And if your SSD fails, it's not the SSD you replace, but the whole logic board, costing upwards of $500. I think you get the point. I really do want to show my full support for this program, but in some cases, you'd be wasting money utilizing it. If you're only fixing something small, like a headphone jack, trackpad, or touch ID sensor, the program justifies itself. So certainly, do your research on what it's going to cost before you decide whether to go with Apple's self-repair program, a third party, or directly to Apple. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Repair Tips playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.